All right. You guys can hear me? Yes. Excellent. Excellent. Glad to have you guys here. Um, my name is Matt Kastner, and how many of you guys are like hungover from tacos? <laughs> Taco hangover? All right. Here I got, I got something to wake you up. Who needs a little breath mint? Here we go. Here we go. Way back in the back. Oh, nice catch. There you go. That's a breath mint. That's a breath mint, baby. <laughs> right there. All right. I got some that aren't quite as strong. Anybody want one that's not quite as strong? Anybody else? Here we go. Coming back there. Anybody else? All right. Here you go. I love to feed my people. Keeping them, keeping them fed is keeping them happy. Um, welcome. How many of this is uh, your first word camp? Raise your hand. First word. Woo! Good job. Look at all these people. My first word camp as well. I have, I've had some great, great conversations, and you know, I'm a recovering uh, Joomla developer. <laughs> No, I actually I actually still like Joomla. I think Joomla has its place, but uh, since I've kind of you know switched over, um, just I see the benefit of both of them, and so it's a great platform. WordPress is great, and one thing that Joomla doesn't have is a great user community that's local, so I can get behind that. Um, but anyway, I want to welcome you, and uh, before we get started, uh, who has gotten some information that made it worth the forty dollar ticket already paid for itself? How about that? That is awesome. That is awesome. I, I think $40 for a two-day conference is easy, easy money to spend. Um, so specifically today, I'm going to be talking about freelancing. Um, I'm going to tell you my story here. Um, and something is on my... Sorry! And Kaufman wants me to connect. There we go. All right. So here's my story. Um, I was an agency guy in Kansas City uh, 20 years ago. And um, before that, let me just start. I am a creative guy. Ever since my mom put a crayon in my hand, I've been a creative kid. Okay, and that has manifested itself in my life in various ways. Um, I'm a graphic designer by trade, but when I started finding out that I could build websites, I became a web developer. Anybody there? Okay, so you understand. Um, I have, have always had this creative drive in me to build something. I love to build. I, how many of you love it when a site launches? Is that not like the best feeling in the world? Oh my gosh. Um, and, I, and I'll say this to start off. I don't want to try to convince anyone to be a freelancer. I do, I do not. Because it comes with its own set of challenges. You guys heard Pippin this morning, right? You heard the laundry list. Okay? If you're not comfortable wearing all those hats, at least in the beginning, then freelancing might not be for you. Okay. However, if that doesn't totally scare you off, then you're in the right spot. My story is when I first started freelancing, I was in high school. How many of you guys are freelancers? Raise your hand. Okay, let me ask this question. How many of you have done a project for someone else because they knew you could do something? Raise your hand. You are a freelancer, all right? <laughs> Whoops. That's, that's you. You are, you are somebody who has done something for someone else because you have a skill that's valuable, all right? I believe every one of us has unique skills, talents, blessings, passions, and I believe those are as unique as our fingerprint, okay? And I believe with that uniqueness comes value, okay? So I'm going to talk a little bit today about business building, but I really want to get to the point where I cast a vision. If you're a freelancer or if you're somebody who's thinking about it, where this could all possibly go. Okay, now I've been freelancing full time now for 17 years. Okay, and I like it that way. I like it. I call it the freelance lifestyle. Um, and let me just go through here. Yeah, you know what? You've done business for somebody else. 
you're a freelancer. Um, but each of us have to answer this, this question up here, why? why? Why become a freelancer? Well, for me, as I was working in agencies, I was getting great projects, working for great clients, working some really crazy hours and some really tight deadlines. Anybody know what I mean? Okay. I loved what I did. There was nothing that I didn't like what I did. But at the end of the day, my gas tank was empty and I never got a chance to meet the client that I just served. Okay, I was in my cube somewhere. And then that was all great. And, I, and at that point in time, I was learning these skills, but this builder in me was getting real frustrated. Okay, and I, I started to see opportunities as I learned the business, as I learned how to build a site, as I learned how to do things, and I realized that people were paying the companies I was working for a lot of money for the work that I was doing. And I wasn't, they weren't putting that in my paycheck, folks. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I had a decision to make. And it, it came at about the point when I had enough freelance clients on the side. And that's what I'll say is if you're thinking about freelancing, don't wait to start. Start it right now. Okay, because this is this is an ongoing thing. Okay, you, you're a freelancer forever. It's at one. There's a point when you shift over and become a freelancer full time. Okay, so I'm going to tell you what my whys are now. My whys used to be frustration, tight deadlines, no appreciation, feeling sorry for myself, a lot of negative stuff, a lot of negative stuff. Today, it's. Um, it's, it's my family. It's, it's the freedom of time, the freedom of being able to invest my skills where I want to invest them. My uh, professor at, uh, I'm a Pittsburgh State grad, I'm a gorilla. Yep, there we go. Um, my, I'm a broadcast major, graphic design minor, which is just very weird. Back in the 90s, they didn't know what to do with me. Um, today, with YouTube, it makes sense, right? Um, he said this to me, made me, made me think. He said, smart people know how, successful people know why. Okay, so I spent a lot of years as a designer, as a web builder, learning how. How to do stuff. How to do this, how to do that. Okay, at some point, the guys that own the businesses know why. How many of you guys were in um, Scott Shaper's uh, seminar just the hour before? Okay, you guys, if you didn't get that, get the recording and watch it. Okay, incredible. Okay, in terms of being able to, to identify the whys, and we're going to talk about this later, for your clients. Okay, and I'm going to unlock this whole thing about, uh, about getting clients and being able to serve them and getting them to hire you again and again. Okay, um, but anyway, quote from Paul. So this, these are my whys. Quality time with my family, the lifestyle, okay? Don't judge me. I live in a small town south of Lewisburg, Mound City, Kansas, population 650. We call it Mayberry. <laughs> There's not a stoplight in the entire county. <laughs> <laughs> I grew up in the country. I, I appreciate that lifestyle, and I have, uh, fortunately, very good internet. <laughs> I'm going to brag a little bit. I'm the mayor of Mount City, and I got a telephone company to come trace fiber through our entire town. We've got gigabit speed to every house and business in town. 70 bucks a month. Oh yeah, <laughs> y'all come to Mountain City. It's a great place to telecommute. <laughs> uh, freedom of time, freedom of work, to be able to pick my clients and work with the people that I want to work with. And I'm going to talk about that later. Financial control. Okay. If there's been anything that I've had to learn as a freelancer, this is the one. Okay, and um, now my wife is so good to me, and she helps me manage my books, but my wife's not an accountant, neither am I. So if you listen to Pippin's story this morning, we had to go find somebody that had that skill. Okay, so just FYI. This is my crew. 
And uh, this is a shot we took last October. And um, <laughs> that is in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. Anybody ever been there? Oh, yeah. Awesome place. Love it. Anyway, um, I had my laptop two miles away and was doing work that afternoon. Love it. This is from six weeks ago. Nice. South Korea. This has freelance story written all over it. The connection that got me to the Olympics is a freelance client. How cool is that? And then I got to go spend two weeks with my daughter in South Korea, and she loved it there. She's probably going to go back in a year and do an exchange program with them. And I had my laptop there. I didn't have to stay disconnected. I was able to stay on top of work. I didn't, I didn't miss too much. Anyway, more control of my time, more control of my earning potential. Give, thing, give to the things that I am passionate about, okay? Uh, that freedom, the flexibility to be able to work for great clients and do the work for that I love. And here's the best part of all, to be my best self. To be true to me and be able to do what I feel like I was created to do. That is the best place in the world, and you can't throw enough money at me to make me give that up. That is why I do what I do. Before I started freelancing, I had fears. And you guys, if you resonate with this, just say oh, amen or whatever. I couldn't find enough clients. These are my fears. This wasn't reality. This was what I was fearing. I couldn't find enough clients. Would they like what I do? Would they be happy with it? But what I charge, pricing, we talked about that last hour. Would I make enough money to support my family? I got four kids. They eat every day. <laughs> every day. Yes, they use water and electricity. It's insane. Oh my gosh. I got three now that use gasoline. Oh my gosh. Anyway, would I succeed? I knew two things. I knew the skills that I had were valuable. That had been proven in my, my corporate job. I knew the skills that I had had value. The next thing is I realized that I really wasn't certain of where I was and I didn't really have any good experience or anyone that I could learn from. So this whole thing, freelance on fire, <laughs> is really just a guy who's been doing this for 17 years looking to help somebody else. About a year ago, I had a conversation with myself. I said, what am I going to do for the next 20 years? Am I going to continue to do this? And then I thought back over the past 20 years, and I thought, if I could have gone back in time and had a conversation with myself in college, and painted a picture, and provided a roadmap, it would have been a game changer for me. Now, I don't discount hard lessons, guys. I believe hard lessons are in our life for a reason. I feel like we learn better when we go through hard lessons. But there's just some things just no one's better, right? Sometimes just having knowledge and knowing where to go and what to do makes all the difference. So I launched in uh, 2006. I launched Freelance. Um, learned some really tough lessons. Tons of lessons. The hard way <laughs> is life. It's life. Um, but I didn't give up. I, I stuck with it. I kept learning and growing. And now that's been more than 15, more than 15 years ago. 17 now. Um, I fought and I persisted. Now I'm able to take time with my family. I have great clients. I pick and choose the jobs that I take. I work when I want, where I want. I can invest in myself and others. I went from making $100 to $1,000 per job to earning recurring contracts worth between fifteen and seventy thousand dollars per year per client. Okay, that didn't happen overnight, but it did happen. And if you guys heard Scott in the previous lesson talk about pricing, that guy gave me goosebumps. The guy was standing up here with a fifty thousand dollar contract. He did three of them last month. He sold three fifty thousand dollar jobs. <clears throat> what would you do with that, guys? But we have this mental block. We have this mental block that that's not something I can do. Right? But it's, it's possible. Um, this is last year. I wondered if there's a way that I could help somebody else 
wonder if I could be the person that would have uh, loved to know early in, I would have loved to have known that information early in my career. So this has been a process for me of harvesting this wisdom over 20 years of experience. And now here we are. Okay, I'm here to share some information that I hope will be valuable to you. If you guys walk away from here with just one nut of information, I'll feel like I've done my job. Okay? All right. There we go. Um, this is going to apply to you if you're a full-time freelancer. And I know there are several in here. I know if you're a seasoned freelancer, I've been doing this more than five years, raise your hand. Yeah, I applaud you guys. Way to go. You're inspiration. And um, if there's something I can say to you that just kind of encourages you, um, you take it. But if you are somebody who's just getting started or has a side hustle or is looking to grow and find out how to do that, that's what I'm going to help you do today. We're going to talk about three things. Okay, we're going to talk about your skills assessment, okay, which is basically your value proposition. What do you have that's valuable? The second thing we're going to talk about is finding clients, okay? It's not as hard as you might think. Okay, the third thing is the long game. How do you prepare to do this on into, I mean, let's face it, I, you know, I plan on retiring a freelancer. I, I don't have any plans right now of walking back into corporate. Not saying that couldn't change, okay? Circumstances could, could dictate that. But I don't have any plans to do that right now. Okay, so I'm in it for the long game. All right, so skills assessment. Oh, by the way, I hope to have, I'm going to be done here in about 15, 20 minutes. So if you have questions, I want them. And then I've, I've got a survey. Any, if anybody would be willing to help me fill out a survey, I really want feedback, especially your questions. I'm going to give it to you. And then I have a special offer for you if you're interested. Um, so I'm going to give you time for that at the end, okay? All right, so understanding my value and what do I charge. Um, uh, part of what my offer is going to be here at the end is going to be a way for you to kind of do this uh, self-analysis in terms of what are your skills? What raw skills do you have? What are things that you've learned to do well? All right. What talents do you have? What are some natural gifts that you have that you can employ in your freelance career? What are your passions? Which for me is key because for me, if your passion is driving you, it can take you to some amazing places. And then I call them blessings. Okay, blessings are things that I have in my life that are great that I did not earn. They were just given to me. And now I see myself as being a steward of those. I call them blessings. Okay? All right. So um, there is only one you. I talked about that, the value in being who you are. Here's the number one thing. This would be one thing I want you to take away. As you are thinking about your freelance career, I want you to be known for something. This is step one in being a freelancer. Okay? Find something that you're good at and be the expert in it. Okay, when someone has a problem and that problem is your niche, you want your name to pop into their mind. Okay, that is how you get clients early on. It's how you keep clients because the more that your name gets out there, the more it's associated with, with the skills you have, the more that you're going to be able to leverage that expertise and convert it into a career. Okay. All right. Scott mentioned this in his uh, presentation. I'm rewording it just a little bit. Actually, uh, it goes along very well. The process of selling has people stymied. Okay. People think sales is slimy. Okay. They think that it takes you stepping and stooping down to some level. But here's what it is. If you want to help someone, that is your end. Okay, Scott, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use Scott's example. He talked about a guy going into a doctor's office with knee pain. And instead of the doctor asking him questions and finding out what the cause of the knee pain was, he gave Scott a pill and a bill and said, here, take this. Okay, the correct method is to ask questions and listen. Ask questions and listen. And literally, you can find clients when you're not even looking for them. If you hear someone struggling with their website, get in, get in the conversation. What's going on? What's the problem? What's the pain point? Scott used the, he used the uh, example of a, a 
bleeding neck, <laughs> you know, is I've got this bleeding neck, it won't stop. And, and someone has the answer for me. Okay, if I, can, if I can give someone the answer, if I can help solve their problem, I, I just didn't make a client. I'm somebody's hero. Okay, so when you look at it from that standpoint, the selling is never an issue when you're able to solve a client's problem. What we need to train ourselves to be is problem solvers and say, you know what? I can help you with that. I can, I can, I can fix that problem. I can make that problem go away. I'll do that for you. Okay, now there's an invoice in, usually attached with that. But that doesn't necessarily be the way you, you start the conversation. It's just simply, you have a problem, I can help you fix it. Let me help you. Okay, that doesn't sound very salesy. That sounds like somebody wanted to help, right? If, if, you, had a, if you had a hole in your neck, and somebody had uh, some tape and some gauze, how much is that tape and gauze worth to you? What would you pay? Exactly, exactly. You're just wanting the solution. You want that pain to go away. All right. Moving on to, 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 to what do I charge? And this could be its entire and its session all its own. Okay. But here's, I'm going to say one thing that, and Scott said this better than I will, is that, is that our value is more than we think. All right. So many of us are used to calculating and boiling down what we do to an hourly rate. That's how we calculate bids that's how we do everything my my uh my question is not necessarily do i do hourly or flat rate the question i ask myself is what's the value what kind of value am i bringing to this organization this company okay that's where the discussion needs to start um and We'll talk a little bit more about that here in this in this second topic, but but knowing what your value is, and then not being afraid to to ask for it. Okay, now Scott had talked about uh, raising his rates, which I think is a great idea. Um, don't put your price up here so high that nobody wants to touch you. Just continually little incremental increases. Okay, start where you're at. Find people that are buying there, and just continually raise your rates. Okay, um, finding clients. When I when I kind of stumbled onto this analogy, it made a lot of sense to me. Okay, so when I when I graduated from college, I didn't have a marketing degree, didn't have a business degree. All right, most of my clients when I started off in freelance were uh, they were friends. They were um, honestly old business old um, employers that I used to work for. It ended up becoming some of my, my best freelance clients, so do not count them out. In fact, I'll say this. If, if you happen to be frustrated right now in your J-O-B, okay, just be careful. Don't burn the bridge prematurely, okay, because there is a very good chance that at some point in time you could convert that old employer into a client. And you're in the best position to because they know what you can do. And sometimes it's easier to pay somebody, pay a freelancer who they know what they're getting than to take another risk on somebody else. Okay? All right. So how many of you have been fishing before? All right. We live in Kansas, or most of us in the Midwest, Kansas, Missouri. Ponds all around us, right? When you go fishing, there's a few things you need to have, right? One is a body of water with some fish in it. Would be helpful. Okay, so you need a market. You need a place where there's some possibility. Okay, then the second thing is, is you need to have uh, some bait. Something that lets those little fishies know that you're out there and you're trying to catch them. Now, they, you know, they're dumb. But sitting in your boat with your fishing pole with no bait and no hook in the water isn't going to get you very many fish, right? All right, so the pond is where my clients hang out, and then the promotion that I do is the bait. Now, um, I'm going to just, just assume everybody here is doing web design, and so literally, guys, you have the best platform to market your services. Okay, everybody now has cell phones and can find you with a Google search. 
okay, or on your social media. There's very few professions that have a built-in um, promotion tool that, that web developers have, okay? So the bait is, the bait is my message. All right. The key to building your business is not how many people you know. This was something that I used to, uh, I used to collect people's contacts like I collect autographs, you know, in an autograph book. I meet somebody, hey, I got their business card. This is great. Oh, man, I got this person in my Rolodex now. Cool. I wonder if they'll ever call me. <laughs> and I just wait. And nothing would ever happen. The key to building your business is not how many people you know. It's how many people know you. Okay, so you've got to be willing to put the bait on the hook and throw it in the water where there's some fish swimming around. That is what you need to do to find clients, okay? Very, very simple analogy, but if you don't do those two steps, then your, your chances of finding clients is very, very slim, okay? Um, so we talked about um, solving the problem, making the pain go away, and be the hero. Um, where can I find clients? All right, you have personal contacts, former employers, professional groups. How many of you brought business cards? There's probably some people walking around these halls that they're here at WordCamp because they're thinking they want to try to figure this thing out. They need a hero because at some point in time, they're going to go, you know what, I've, I've tried it and I'm not figuring it out. I need some help. So the opportunity is here even in, in venues like this. Networking events, uh, meetups, um, Kansas City WordPress. Who's a member of the meetup? Awesome, awesome. Conferences, <laughs> trade shows, LinkedIn groups. How many of you are part of uh, some sort of a professional LinkedIn group? Awesome. Facebook group, same thing. Um, Upwork, freelance sites. I'm gonna throw Upwork and freelance there at the bottom. Whoa. Um, because uh, that's, that's a, a pond that has way too many hooks in the water, <laughs> in my mind. And you're not going to catch the big fish in that pond. Um, so stick with, the, stick with the smaller ponds, the places where you can go face-to-face. -face. That's the best. If you can go face-to-face, -face, you're going to find better success. Okay, lawn game. Sweet spot. I talked about this earlier. Gifts, talents, blessings, and passions. Um, and finding perfect clients. So as you are becoming this freelancer, are you going to work with some people that you really don't love? Yeah. Yeah. Are they, they're, they're giving you a check and it's, it's helping pay the bills. So you're taking their money. Okay. But what you really are, what I really want to do as a freelancer is I want to find those clients that I love. Okay. Um, and you want, you want clients that will love you back. Okay. Um, I've learned this lesson probably way too late, but I can say I've learned it now and I'm trying to employ it. That social proof is greater than your portfolio. Okay. What people say about you and the service that you give them is worth way more than the pictures and the examples that you have on your own personal portfolio website. Okay, because the portfolio only tells part of the story. It doesn't tell the whole story. Okay, this is Beth Folk. I, I met Beth about a year ago. She is HR manager for Accent uh, HR staffing over in Lenexa. Found her through LinkedIn Profinder. Anybody ever use that LinkedIn Profinder? Okay, I think you have to be a, I think you have to be a LinkedIn Pro member. But it's basically a way for people to solicit work. They throw out job opportunities, and if, you, if it's in your niche, you can respond to it and you can provide a proposal. Anyway, I, I threw a proposal out to, uh, to Beth, and her, her request was, it kind of caught me. She was frustrated. She was working with a, another individual. Actually, she'd worked with a couple. Trying to put together a PowerPoint presentation, guys. <laughs> a PowerPoint presentation. I'm like, really? And she was, they weren't getting it right. They weren't getting it like she wanted it. And her, her requirements were right there, very straightforward. And I'm like, okay, I, I think I can handle this. This is, this is the monkey claw. 
All right, this is the monkey claw from Scott uh, Shaper's talk. I threw I threw her a softball. I said, "Listen, I said I'll give you I'll, I'll I'll handle this for you. If it's not the way you want it, when I'm done, you don't pay me." All right. I, I took all the risk off her. She was she came to this, and she was like this. She was really upset. So I, I tried to take the risk out of it for her, and this is what happened. This is, this, is a, this is a testimonial that she left on my LinkedIn page. You guys know what the recommends are section on LinkedIn? If you're not using them, start requesting recommendations. Okay, because this for me is way more valuable than the PowerPoint presentation that I designed for her. Because it describes her frustration, and it shows me coming in and providing some help. Giving her, give, you know, taking the pain away. All right. And so this is now part of my LinkedIn profile. And it, I, I don't even want to show them the PowerPoint. It was ugly. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to scoot past this one here. Um, I've got seven more minutes. This is, this is kind of where I want you guys to start thinking. This, this circle of awesomeness came from a, a Michael Hyatt. Do you guys know who Michael Hyatt is? Okay. Uh, thought leader, um, productivity. Um, he, he, has this, he has this philosophy. It's called the circle of awesomeness. And it's, it's, re, it's regarding sales and a sales cycle, okay? And it starts with your, it starts with your first sale, okay? And, and, I, and I would say it starts off, instead of a circle, it starts off kind of as a spiral, kind of right here in the middle. And then as you, you do more, the circle gets bigger and bigger. But as you make the sale, um, your goal is to take the client's pain away, to get results, to, to, to help them get what they want, okay? When that happens, then we have, to, we have to really be on our feet because we want to capture that story, okay? So when you have a client and you are working with them and you just save the day. You give them what they want. You help them do whatever they need to do. You say, you know what? I've enjoyed working on this project with you. Would you take a moment and write down just whatever? I'm looking for some recommendations. I want to be able to share this experience with other people. And the reason why it's so powerful is it comes from them. It's their perspective and it has that pain and tension in it, which I didn't feel that. I was there to provide the, I provide the service, not experience all the internal struggle. Okay? So produce the great story, and then you leverage these stories in your own personal marketing. Okay? So instead of saying, hey, I just built five big websites, I've got this client who shared this amazing story about how I was able to partner with them to do this big, huge project. And now it's doing this for their company or it's achieving this for them. It's sharing your client's win. It's not puffing yourself up. It's showing what you were able to do and help this client achieve. Okay, So it's, it's helping them um, get something great and then you use that story in your marketing and then what happens is is that becomes your uh, that becomes your opportunity to make a sale again okay you get that social proof other people see oh man he was able to help them get this these results I've got these problems maybe they can help me too okay it just becomes this 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 cycle that goes over and over and over circle of awesomeness very very cool um, so now where do you leverage all these stories that you have? Well, gosh, we've got too many places. Uh, the biggest one is to tell the story yourself. It's like, gosh, I just helped this client. We just did this amazing project together, and I'm so proud of it. And it's getting this result for them, or it's helping them this do this or that. It's making their company run better, or make more money, or do whatever they do. Okay, tell your clients stories. Um, I would say leverage your LinkedIn profile. That 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 social network is being is becoming huge, um, and people are are getting on LinkedIn now more than ever. Um, so so spruce up your LinkedIn profile if you haven't already. Uh, your own website portfolio. This is something I recommend. I. <laughs> 
I, I have, I, I'm a Pitt State grad, and I, they contact me and they ask me to take um, seniors who are looking to do internships. And I have this bad habit of turning high, uh, college seniors into freelancers. <laughs> they don't want to go work for corporate when they're done with me. They see, I, I, let, I peel back the curtain and I show them how I do it, and they're like, man, this is great. Um, but in your own portfolio, I tell these students, I'm like, don't just put a snapshot of what you did. Write a narrative. People call them case studies, white papers. That's all they are, they're a narrative. Identify the problem, how you solved the problem, what the win or the outcome was. Okay, and you can, you can add that very easily to a portfolio piece. To give, to give somebody looking at a lot more context into what happened with that project. Okay, what problem did it solve? Okay, case studies. If you have a newsletter or email blast, that'd be a great place for it. Your Facebook page, if you don't have a freelancing page, they're free to get. I recommend getting one. Instagram, all kinds of, of great stuff. Finally, that's what I'm going to do. Perfect client. Do they actually exist? Yes, they do. And I'm going to define for you what the perfect client is. Are you ready for this? All right. A client that pays you well for the work that you would do for free if time and money were no object. I have two of them right now that if I didn't have to support a family, I'd be doing the work for free because I believe in what they're doing so much. But the cool thing is, is that the love is reciprocated because they love working with me. They know what I give them and they trust me and they come back. Oh, that's, that's the perfect client, guys. That's the client that's, I mean, their family. I'm a single, I'm a single solopreneur, um, but this is like an extended team that I get to call family. It's awesome. It's incredible. All right. Let me see, is that it? That's my last slide, I think. Maybe. It's not going anywhere. I had, an, I had, oh, here we go. Uh, so, sweet spot. This is, this is something I'm, I'm offering to you. Um, I, I, have a, I have an ebook that I wrote. I don't have time to go in today. If you'd like it, it's free. It's 32 pages. If you want to know what your sweet spot is, I have a little exercise in there that I take you through. Um, some of the content that I shared today is in there. By the way, this whole slide deck is going to be available for you. So, if you guys want that, um, it's going to be available. Um, no problem at all. Okay, and then here's a special bonus for today, and then I'm going to start taking some questions. I have a, I have a form, a, a feedback form. If you are willing to help me out and give me some feedback from today, and I realize this presentation wasn't perfect, but I hope to get better at it, I'm going to offer you a free 20-minute coaching call. Okay, any question, nothing, I'm not going to sell you anything. All I'm going to do is I'm going to listen to your questions and I'm going to do my best to answer them. Okay, whatever it is. I'm not going to say I know everything, but if there's something that I can do to kind of help communicate some understanding, answer a question, tackle a problem with you, um, I want to offer that to you. Okay? So, with that, I'm going to go ahead and open up for questions. We have some time. Go. Anybody? Yes. How do you make time to find clients when you're, you've got deadlines on projects, you're working 24 7, you know you need to stop and find those clients? But that's a, that's a great question. So, uh, one of the things that as a freelancer, I've had to shift my mind around is I left a corporate job where I was working 40 plus hours a week, okay, on the clock. Okay, some weeks, of course, you know it's more than that, right? Um, and I immediately, when I became a freelancer, thought that I have to be working 40 hours and then do everything else on top of that. Once I shifted my mind and said, uh, -uh no, no, that's, that's why I, I, I feel like the value proposition and what you can charge as a freelancer needs to equate your value. Because honestly, I really only am working and billing probably 20, 25 hours a week. Billable work for clients. Okay, I have 10 hours a week that I, that I build toward business building. So whether that is meeting new clients, 
writing proposals, going to networking events, uh, working on my own personal marketing um, or whatever. And then the rebalance of that would be whatever miscellaneous stuff comes up. Life happens. So I, I think from a, from a mental standpoint, um, we, have to, we have to carve intentionally. And, and it's, it's a process to get there. It's a process to get there. And you don't want to necessarily, um, well, burnout happens. It happens for everybody. Um, but that's a, that's a great question. That's a great question. My, my thing is you want to make it a goal as a freelancer that you're not billing out 40 hours a week. You want to bill out 20, so do the math, whatever you feel like, whatever you have to make, okay, bill, do it based on that time, not 40 hours, 20, 30, or something like that, and build in some cushion so that you've got room to do other business building stuff. Like, like Pippin said, you're the accountant, you're the sales guy, you're the janitor, I, you know, chief cook and bottle washer. Yeah, next question, yeah. So let's say you're you're in Jackson Hole, Wyoming, and you're you're doing stuff with the family, and then now you have to disengage with the family and go carve out some time to work. How what what are some of your strategies around doing that while still being engaged with the family? Okay, so I plan for that. Um, I knew I was going to be out of town. I knew I was going to be spending time with the family. Um, typically what I would do is if I, I would take care of like, like essential tasks, like email and that sort of thing, I typically do it before breakfast. Wake up a half hour early, whatever, take care of stuff. If it's pressing, then you kind of have to call an audible maybe. And that happens sometimes. Um, but I, I'm, I'm going to get a I'm going to get a you know a 911 at home just as easily sitting on the couch. So you know, um, but you know, here's the other thing: is I communicate with my with my clients. I'm like, hey, I'm working remotely right now, and I'm available. I'm not telling them that I'm not available to them, but hey, just you know, um, we I, I may not be getting back to you quite as quick. But they all have my cell phone. If it's an emergency, uh, give me a call. So that's great. That's great. You kind of have to be flexible, though. Yeah. Do you find that there are certain companies that are more likely to work with freelancers, or um, any tips there? Yes, and and let me let me tell you this. I think right now where we're at as a as an economy, I think freelancers have an incredible position because of this. If you're working in an agency, I can provide services. I, I, I can provide the exact same services that they would get from an agency for a fraction of the price and still make really good money. Yeah, and so if somebody's looking for value, then, Krista, yes? Um, so I started my business 13 years ago, but I never called myself a freelancer. Like, I don't even have is that freelancer, consultant, contractor, solopreneur, I think it's synonymous. I, I mean, I, I, really, I mean, I, a freelancer, I don't know why I stuck that name to myself. But yeah, I think, you know. Other yeah. 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 Yeah, that's a that's a that's a great question. Um, I mean, I, when I see when I say freelancer, really, what that connotes to me is, you know, like a contractor. Although a contractor may, I, I see that more as single focused on maybe one client, um, whereas a freelancer, I'm just a gun for hire. Um, I can I can go work for anybody at any time. I'm not strapped down. Um, but I mean, I, I get that. I get that there could be a, a perception there that a freelancer may not be the person that they want to work for. Uh, when, I, when I go out and put myself out in front of people, I typically don't say freelancer. I'll just say graphic design web professional. Yeah. How do you handle your health insurance? Uh, Blue Cross, Blue Shield, Afford a Blue. Yeah, yeah, and, and the increased payments over the last three years have been awful. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's dealing with it. For those of us that are still you know, working a 40 hour week corporate job and trying to do freelancing, what advice can you give about finding that balance and yeah. respect? Yeah, so so what I would say is while you've got while you've got your 40 hour job and you're building your freelance clientele, you wanna be working you wanna be working on getting your rate up. Okay. I would say not necessarily build a huge client base that you have to really micromanage. 
um, start growing your start growing your clients to the point where the bill rates are getting really good. Okay, to where to where when you have to cut up cut you know cut over, you've got you've got some higher level clients that you can start leaning on. Because honestly, as a freelancer, contractor, consultant, I do not need a ton of clients to pay my bills. I just need a handful of really good ones. And finding them is, is, a, is a process, it takes time, but I don't have to go find hundreds, I just have to go find a dozen or two to pay the bills. So, who else had a question? Yeah. So, as a freelancer, most of my um, business has come through word of mouth and professional connections. Have you done more traditional paid advertising? And if so, has any of it paid off? <laughs> you know, like pay for I, I wish I wish I could say I have really good experience with paid advertising. No, yeah. okay. most of my most of my work has come through word of mouth okay. or or through my social presences. Okay. People find me. Okay. Um, but you know what? When when you got a friend or you've done work for somebody and they talk to somebody else in your top of mind and they pass you, that is that is better than any advertising you could buy. They're already sold. If somebody recommended you to them. Just, I mean, it's to start working. I mean, that's literally, it's that easy. Okay, we got th two minutes. Yes? So you talked about, and I'm just starting out, so you talked about like what, what skills you have. Mm -hmm. so, like what, what type of skills, whether technical skills or soft skills? You yeah, so, so that's a combination, right? So, so what are you good at? If you were to you put on your resume right now, what would you put on there? I am good at this. I have done this. Okay, so maybe it's writing. Maybe it's uh, page building. Maybe it's SEO. Maybe it's WooCommerce. Maybe it's graphic design. Maybe it's um, setting up Etsy stores. You know, um, maybe it's marketing, whatever your little thing. I mean, th those are your skills that you sell. Uh, the soft skills are going to just pay off, and they're just going to pay off if you're if you show up for work, you're kind, you support your people, you help them solve problems. I mean, that's just going to make you better. That's that's just going to make you better. One more minute, and we'll get out of here. Yes. Um, uh, in percentages, how? Uh how much more uh, successful have you been from your previous job? Oh my goodness! Uh, as like far as like salary, as like that, um, probably four or five times over. Yeah. Yeah, it's 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 a it's a mind shift. I when I left corporate, my I had to, <laughs> guys. It's it's that it, that is the thing between your ears is what holds us back the most <laughs> as freelancers. It's this thing between our ears holds us back. We think there's these glass ceilings on top of our heads and we can't punch through them. And so it's yes, there's tons of potential. Okay, I showed, a, I showed a picture of her. Her name's Kayla Weirs. She was my uh, intern last summer. She spent three months with me. And by the end of the summer, she, okay, she's a waitress at Chili's. By the time of the end of the summer, she had sold a $3,000 WordPress site, five pages. <laughs> yeah, when you get, when the bug bites, it's hard to get rid of it. Anybody else? Guys, I want to thank you for being here today. I hope the rest of your conference is great. I'm going to be in the lounge at 3 o'clock today. And I invite you to come talk to me. I would love to, to get to know you, share my story, hear your story. Um, I've got some business cards in the back with some swag and some uh, sweet stuff. If you've got a sweet tooth right now, um, those are free for you to have. And uh, guys, have a great day. Thank you. Thank you.